Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. We begin tonight with some breaking news as Rosewood on Broadway is restricting all visitors into their facility for several weeks. They say this move comes as two employees and two residents living there have tested positive for COVID-19. The residents are currently being isolated to their rooms and the employees are in isolation at their homes. All employees will have to go through a daily screening for symptoms and fever. A Minnesota state senator says officials are asking doctors to fill out death certificates with diagnosis of COVID-19, whether the person died of it or not. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard talked to the lawmaker today, who says fear may be coming into play. Minnesota Senator and Dr. Scott Jensen says he received a seven-page document from the Minnesota Department of Health on how doctors should go about filling out a cause of death certificate. The letter from the Minnesota Department of Health gives advice to physicians, physician assistants, and others who certify deaths. The doctor says the letter takes you to a CDC website that has recommendations on how to include COVID-19 as a diagnosis for someone who was never tested for COVID-19. Yeah, I have a nursing home patient who's frail and 88 years old and comes down with a cough and, and a fever and after three days ends up um, passing away from pneumonia. I'm not going to put influenza on that death certificate. So I doubt that I would be inclined to put COVID-19. Dr. Jensen says each state's reported death numbers are making a lot of people fearful, adding that getting the number right is critical, especially during a pandemic. I worry that sometimes we're so darn interested in just jazzing up the fear factor that sometimes people's ability to think for themselves is paralyzed if they're frightened enough. One of the scenarios listed under the CDC guidance for certifying deaths due to coronavirus says, although no testing was done, the coroner determined that the likely underlying cause of death was COVID-19 given the patient's symptoms and exposure to an infected individual. So is the Minnesota state data reliable? I don't think I have any position to question that per se. I know that I have talked with nursing staff who have been involved with people who have passed away that had either living wills or were on hospice care. In some of those situations, uh, I've been led to believe that there may have been a COVID-19 diagnosis included on the death certificate document without having had a COVID-19 confirmed laboratory test, but I don't have any way to confirm that myself. He says the public isn't stupid, and if you start messing with numbers, you're going to wish you didn't. In the FM area, Callie Hubbard, Valley News Live. To stay up to date on those latest numbers yourself, download our Valley News Live app. In an effort to slow the spread of COVID-19, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is extending the state's stay-at-home order until May 4th. The governor applauded Minnesotans, saying they've flattened the curve more than any other state, which has helped avoid overflow in hospitals. But with the state's peak projected for early June, Walls says the extension is necessary to build up health care equipment and bed space. We cannot rest easy. This thing can explode overnight if you don't take the proper precautions. Walls also pushed back dine-in uh, restaurants and bars reopening to May 4th. However, they are allowed to remain open for takeout, delivery, and pickup. Minnesota added another 85 positive cases today, the most in a single day, bringing the total number to 1,154. Another five people have died from coronavirus, bringing the state's death total to 39. 135 patients are in the hospital, with 64 of those patients in ICU. Clay County has 20 positive cases, 632 patients no longer need to be isolated. North Dakota's governor wants people to use common sense when it comes to travel quarantine orders. Doug Bergham specifically highlighted that as the approach for North Dakota and Minnesota residents crossing the state border. The governor says essential workers, people participating in outdoor activities, or those seeking health care would be among the exempted. Snowbirds or spring breakers would not. It estimates that there's more than a third of North Dakota's population lives, lives rather along the Minnesota border. Health officials say there are 14 new COVID-19 cases across the state today, bringing the total number of positive cases up to 251. 
Springtime isn't always about flowers blooming. Sometimes you need to deal with weather like this. A rain mixture in West Fargo this afternoon. Sounds like a warmer jacket will be needed in the coming days. And let's find out from our First Alert Chief Meteorologist, Hutch Johnson. Hutch? Truly amazing. We have temperatures well up in the 40s, and that stuff falls down, and it can surprise you. But up at cloud level, as we talked about in Hutch's class this week on Tuesday, another class coming tomorrow, precipitation makes it down to the ground, dependent upon temperatures in the atmosphere below the cloud. Look at this, north of Langdon, a couple of uh, thunderbolts there along with the snow showers. Temperatures are in the 30s, north of a line from say Devil's Lake through just north of Fargo and Detroit Lakes uh, down to the south and to the west that line. We have 40s with winds gusting still over 40 miles per hour. Check out this cloud, some vertical extent to that guy as another shower is pushing now to the south and west of the FM area. Our temperatures are gonna slip down into the low 30s this evening here in the FM area, and it's going to be a cool and windy one in Grand Forks as well. The wind continues, Mike, all evening long. Your forecast here is gonna be updated in a couple of minutes. Heavier jacket needed. It is. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Minnesota's Governor Tim Walz is sending National Guard members to the Northern Valley to help with the flood fight. The governor says guardsmen will be going to Marshall County and the city of Oslo to monitor dikes and flood protection systems. The guard will also help with rescue operations if any are needed. Multiple counties have already declared local emergencies. In Grand Forks, the Park District has closed its public uh, playgrounds until further notice. The mood is a move is made to uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19. Open park spaces and trails will remain open, and the Park District says it hopes to reopen the playgrounds as soon as it is recommended by the Department of Public Health. In the wake of two Fargo postal workers testing positive for COVID-19, the Postal Service says there's been a 20% increase in package deliveries the last four weeks. The USPS is declining to say which office these employees worked at and their positions, but the agency says the diagnosis came at a time when they're being stretched by the pandemic. A woman living in West Fargo says she had package delivery problems before and things have now gotten worse. We still order online, especially now because you can't go to stores as, as much and markets are all closed. So we have no choice but to order online. Although package delivery has gone up, mail delivery has decreased and the Postal Service says it's experiencing a significant loss in revenue. We've been following this story since it was called into our whistleblower hotline. And if you need help with an issue in your community, give our hotline a call at 701-237-6576. Leave a tip. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Three people in a Fargo hospital after an incident in Becker County last night. Authorities say that they got a report of a vehicle driving very fast through people's yards in Elbow Lake. A short time later, deputies say they got another call that two people were hit by a car after trying to stop it. All three people were airlifted to Fargo, and we haven't gotten word on the extent of their injuries. Fargo police say they're seeing a spike in overdose calls in the metro. They've responded to six overdose calls since March 28th, one of those resulting in a death. There were six overdose calls and two deaths last year. That was for the entire year. Authorities say this is a reminder that no illegal drugs should be considered safe. People are working to find the people responsible for selling the drugs and taking them off the streets. A video that a North Dakota principal placed online is going viral. The Harvey High School school official created his own lip sync to a popular boy band song. He hopes that the video sends his students a message of hope, laughter, and caring. You are my fire. Principal Stanley continues to show up to school every day. However, lately it's been a little quiet. It's, it's been a little bit more lonely without the students and, and definitely miss seeing their faces. In a video posted to YouTube Sunday, Justin Stanley is seen dancing through the hallways and singing to his students at home. The main thing that was going through my head was how can I put a smile on our kids' faces and uh, and I wanted to make our staff laugh. His moves were viewed more than 5,000 times. A little awkward, we'll just say that. It, it, it was kind of hard to dance with no music. But the message to his students was much simpler than his dance moves. It really ultimately was about the students and, and uh, putting a smile on their faces, just letting them know that I miss them. Don't wanna hear you. 
and put a little uh, message at the end of it. Just, I hope they're all doing well and staying safe. Dancing through the hallways, but this time at a safe social distance. Principal Stanley says he's using social media to spread his message and encourage other school administrators to step up to the challenge and create, create a video of their own. Later on Valley News Live at 6, what one company is doing to clean N95 masks. And mostly Mooney last night. This a photo uploaded by Jennifer. Thanks for taking the time to share it. Cool air from the north is heading southward. We'll have details on some warmer weather, though, coming up next.